Hello and welcome to Julia Donaldson and Friends. I'm Julia Donaldson and my friend this week is Emily Gravitt, who illustrated this story, Cave Baby. Emily doesn't actually usually illustrate other people's picture books. She usually writes her own. She's a very good writer as well as an illustrator. So I did feel really honoured when she agreed to do the pictures for Cave Baby. You're going to meet Emily a bit later on, but first I'm going to tell you the story. Cave Baby's lucky. He lives inside a cave with his mum, who's good at painting, and his dad, who's very brave, and a saber-toothed tiger, a hyena and a hare, and a grey woolly mammoth and a big brown bear. Cave Baby's lonely. Nobody will play. Dad is busy being brave. Mum says, keep away. Everything is boring. Then suddenly, it's not. For in a corner of the cave, he finds a brush and pot. Spots on the hyena, stripes on the hare, stars on the tiger, squiggles on the bear, zigzags on the mammoth. This is lots of fun. But mum and dad are furious and say, look what he's done. Cave mum fetches water. She mutters and she wipes. No more spots and squiggles. No more stars and stripes. Cave dad waves his finger. If you don't take care, a mammoth's going to throw you to the big brown bear. Cave Baby's restless. He's feeling wide awake. A long grey trunk comes sneaking in, all wiggly like a snake. Where are you taking me? Where? Tell me where. Are you going to throw me to the big brown bear? Stripes in the forest. A tiger's lurking there. Don't throw me to the tiger or the big brown bear. Crashing in the bushes. A hare is leaping there. Maybe he's escaping from the big brown bear. A cackle in the bracken. A hyena's laughing there. Has he heard a joke about the big brown bear? A cave in the hillside. I wonder who lives there. I hope it's not, don't let it be the big brown bear. The cave is bright with moonlight. The walls are plain and bare. Snoring in the shadows. Someone's sleeping there. Cave baby's worried. He doesn't understand until the woolly mammoth pops a paintbrush in his hand. A five-legged tiger, a long curly hair, horns on a hyena, a beard on a bear, a moustache on a mammoth. This is lots of fun. Then the mammoth wakes his family and says, look what he's done. And they rollick and they frolic, they trumpet and they crash, they wade into the water, they roll and romp and splash. They shake the baby by the hand, then lift their trunks and wave as the mammoth picks him up again and takes him to his cave. Cave baby's happy. He's fast asleep in bed. He dreams about a tiger with stripes of pink and red and a grass green hyena and a sky blue hare and a moon yellow mammoth and a small brown bear. I hope you enjoyed that story and I wonder if any of you have ever drawn pictures on your walls and if so, if people were cross with you like Cave Baby's mum and dad or if they were delighted, like the mammoth and his family. And talking of mammoths, it's time now for me to hand you over to the illustrator, Emily Gravett, 
so that she can draw you a picture of a mama. Thank you, Julia. Hi, my name is Emily Gravett and I am the illustrator of Cave Baby. So I drew the pictures and today I'm going to show you how I drew the mammoth in Cave Baby. And if you'd like to, you can join in too. Right, let's draw the mammoth. You are going to need some things. You are going to need a pencil and a rubber. Those are the minimum things you're going to need. But I am also going to use some paint. I've got some black paint on a plate here and a couple of paint brushes. But if you haven't got paint, that's OK. You could use a felt tip pen or wax crayons, all sorts of things. But we're going to start with the pencil. Use this pencil here. And when I draw, I mostly make shapes. So for the mammoth, we're going to start off with a line. That's going to be the bottom of the mammoth, like his belly underneath. And we're going to make a sort of rectangle. So we're going to go up a bit from that side. And then this side, we're going to go up a bit higher. And then we're going to join that line together like that. That's his body, more or less. Okay, let's get that in the middle of the screen so you can see. So that's one shape. We're going to do a couple more rectangles from the front end. We're going, to, we're going to draw it just below, about that much below. I'm going to draw a line. That's the ground, so we don't go below the ground. Otherwise, it'll look like he's standing in a hole. I'm going to draw a sort of rectangle that comes down. A little roundy bit at the bottom. That's his feet. That's one foot. And then at the back, a more of a sort of sloping in rectangle. And I'm going to rub out those lines there if I can. Pressed a bit hard with my pencil, I think. So he's got two legs. I'm going to draw the legs that go behind. So I'm going to draw a sort of squeezed in rectangle there. That's one back leg. And I think the front one, he's going to be lifting up. So I'm going to do a curve and another curve. If you're drawing along with me, if I'm going too fast for you, just pause the video. It doesn't matter. I've been drawing it a lot more than you, so I probably go a bit faster. But if I'm going too fast, just pause the video. Right, now we're going to do his head. So that's sort of a shoulder blade up there. We're going to start a bit to the right of that. And we're going to draw a triangle like that, very faintly. How are you doing? I know it doesn't look much like a head, but trust me, go with it. We're going to draw and see the point of the triangle and that bit there, we're going to do a little curvy line that sits between them. And then I can rub out all of those bits there. Ooh, starting to look a little bit more like it. And then from the front of the triangle, I'm going to do a big curvy line like that. That's going to be his trunk and a bit of the end. And then I'm going to follow that line all the way around till it gets to the bottom of that bit there. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to curve it round. Can you see how I've done a curve? Just touches that bottom line. And it means that then I can come in and I can rub out all of those bits really is starting to look a bit like a mammoth what do you reckon i also need to put in an eye i think that's going to be about halfway up the front of that bit there's a round bit and a little pupil in his eye he's going to be looking slightly back towards us and then up near here a little tiny ear because i think mammoths don't have really enormous ears they're not like elephants but what they do have is they have enormous tusks. So from this bit below, I'm going to draw massive banana shaped curve. And then right at the point, I'm going to draw back again, getting slightly wider as it comes back and joins in there. That's one, because that one's in front of his trunk. I'm going to rub out those lines there. And then he's got another one behind. You can't really see it because it's behind. But So you just draw a line that's slightly parallel with that top one. 
and then oh there we go what do you think now i'm going to make his bottom a bit more slopey and curved so i'm going to draw a curved line in there and then i'm going to rub out this bit here and he needs a sort of curly tail that comes up If we notice one thing that this woolly mammoth, hairy mammoth, doesn't have yet, it doesn't really have any hair. So this is where I'm going to use, I'm going to use my paints now. So I've got this black paint and I've got a paintbrush somewhere. And I'm going to dip my paintbrush in the water till it's really wet. And then I'm going to make a sort of grey pale black not an all black just a sort of pale black and then i'm going to use that color not the not the on the tusks everywhere else and possibly not in the eye if i can help it and i'm going to make him a watery wet gray color There we go. I'll follow his tail down. A bit more water. A bit more grey. Oh, that's a bit darker. If it's a bit too dark, I'm going to use the darker bits to do the legs which are at the back because they're more in shadow. There we go. And mustn't forget his trunk. And I might put a bit of shading there. And I might put a little watery line of the shadow underneath his body. And then, with a slightly darker bit, I'm going to do little flicky lines like this because we've got to get him looking like a hairy mammoth. So he needs some hair going up. Some hair coming off. Shade under his Ooh. hair coming forward from that point on his head, and hair behind his ear. And you see how it's blending in because that's because the paint's very wet. So the next thing I'm going to do is leave that to dry a little bit and then I'm going to go back on with the pencil and a bit more paint. I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow around his eye there and I'm going to put a very faint light grey bit of shading at the bottom of one tusk and on the tusk behind to make it look like it's behind. Okay now we're going to leave it to dry for a bit. Right, I think that the paint has dried. So I'm just going to try and rub out that bottom line a bit. Okay, perfect. And now I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to put in, actually, I'm going to use a softer pencil, I think. I'm going to use this pencil and I'm going to put in hairy bits. And I'm going to make some little lines down the front of his trunk he's got creases in his trunk and then lots of little hairs and then I'm going to draw hairs that come off the edge of his body oh a little smile maybe so he can be a really hairy mammoth right down below quite long hair. I wonder if anyone brushes him. That would be a big job, wouldn't it? Brushing a mammoth. There we go. That is how I draw the mammoth from Cave Baby. Thank you so much, Emily. And now I'm going to show you a little film of Malcolm and me singing the Cave Baby song. Would you be happy playing with sticks and stones, wearing a leafy nappy? Sitting round the 
fun all in antelope bones if you were a little cave baby would you be a very brave baby would you ever it for today but I hope you'll join me next week when I'm going to be telling you a brand new story from the Acorn Wood series. It's called Cat's Cookbook and I'm quite excited about it especially because it's got lovely pictures by Axel Scheffler. Axel will be here too next week and we'll do some drawing for you so I do hope to see you then. Goodbye for now.